Well, hey, Mountainside, uh, I say it every week. It's Tuesday again, and the weeks just go by so fast. And hey, guess what? Uh, tomorrow is the first day of fall, Wednesday the 22nd. And I, I personally, I, I always hate to see summer going by the wayside, but I also know that living in this part of the United States, we are sure blessed with some awesome, awesome weather in the fall, and that's okay with me. Hey, also, thank you for bearing with us in worship this past Sunday when it concerned our, our sound system uh, for our song leaders and the streaming. But after talking with uh, several that uh, listened to the stream, our worship time, you know, over the streaming device was a truer sense, basically, of the congregation singing rather than the uh, soloist song leading that we had been putting out there. So we'll continue to tweak it, but, but thank you for your patience, and we know we're on the right track. Also had a conversation with Julia and Paula's sister Shelley uh, yesterday. Uh, excuse me. Let's see. It, yes, it was yesterday. But she lives in Kansas City, and as most of you know already, she is dealing with advanced cancer. Uh, but she wouldn't have known it by her attitude. It was the Shelley I've come to know over the years, and it was very encouraging to hear from her. And she is so thankful for our prayers. And please continue those prayers. Also, Doug and Susan want everyone to know uh, that their son, David, uh, you know, he's been home for a little while, but he continues to improve from his COVID experience and he hopes to return to work soon. It really, uh, he's still extremely tired. I mean, it really took the wind out of his sails, as you can imagine, but they are thankful for everyone's support, everyone's prayers for David, his family, and for Doug and Susan as well, by being David's parents. It is... It is hard to see your kids suffering, but uh, it's going in the right direction. Uh, Sunday in the cafe class, we were in the uh, book of Ephesians. We continue to be there. We were in Ephesians 3. And we began to talk about, or excuse me, Patrick uh, Pace led the class, and he began by talking about church experiences. And anyone who's been a part of the Lord's church for any length of time, you've had good experiences and you've had some, some tough experiences, some bad experiences. I mean, after all, the church is made up of flawed people, and you know who they are, you and me. But I'm thankful uh, that our poor experiences are uh, far outweighed by our blessings being in the body of Christ. Now this evening, I just wanted to read the first few verses of chapter 3 and, and share some thoughts I, I have uh, with you. Ephesians 3, verses 1 through 3. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. You know, when Paul says, for this reason, he's really referencing back to his words in chapter 2, verses 11 through 22, probably with an emphasis on verse 22 itself. But we know that Paul had been arrested in Jerusalem as a result of the actions of the religious leadership, his fellow Jews. See, Paul had taken a stand for the equality of, of Jews and Gentiles as Christian believers. And Paul was right, but the leaders were certainly not in agreement with his or the teachings of Jesus Christ, you know, much less that Jesus was the Messiah. And these leaders, they, they looked at Paul's teachings as radical and destructive, basically, to uh, the Jewish religion, especially temple practices. But they pressured the Romans to arrest Paul and convict him on the grounds of treason. And that's how Paul ended up in Rome in prison. And you can see this in Acts 21 and Acts 28. And this is also why Paul makes the statement, For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. Now, Paul also knows that God is in control. And it's only because the Father allowed this to happen that he was imprisoned in the first place. Thus, he acknowledges himself as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. Now, we often wonder, how does Paul do what he does? I mean, how does he endure when it seems there was so much against him? And I can't imagine there being anyone who physically suffered any more than Paul did for the sake of the kingdom. I was reading some stuff, and this psychotherapist uh, 
he maintained that people can endure any what, okay? They can endure any what as long as they have a why. I mean, how else? Uh, and I would agree with him because how else do you survive something like the Holocaust, what Paul survived, or our veteran prisoners of war in, in Vietnam? And you've read some of the stories. How do you survive? Well, Paul suffered greatly for his, you know, obvious, his outspoken faith in Jesus Christ. And in this case, he had done it for the sake of the Gentiles, which was exactly what he had been charged to do when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Now, how did Paul do this? Well, it's easy. It's simple. He had a why for the what. Paul knew his life was being used for something far greater than he could have ever done on his own. He knew his his life belonged to God the Father and that nothing had come into his life that had not first passed through those nail-scarred hands. Our question today is simple and it should be asked by ourselves to ourselves. Do I have that kind of confidence? I should and I can because God's equipped us to be able to do this. I simply need to surrender daily to God's will for my life. Our circumstances, whatever they are, should, should be seen as the proving ground of God's great mercy and love, not just for me, but for the world around me as well. Everybody I come into contact with. Oh, church, as I close, may the world see Jesus in our lives. Oh, May he see Jesus in us. Hey, thank you for tuning in and have a blessed rest of the week. Good evening.